Hi and welcome back to my playthrough of Arkham Horror the second edition. I'm really overwhelmed by all your awesome comments out there. <laughs> it really seems there is in demand for yet another playthrough of Arkham Horror here. I was under the impression that I did some minor goofs, but obviously I was basically playing it correctly. The one thing I, I think I mentioned that doing editing was in respect to the encounter here at the Silver Twilight Lodge, where I thought I would have to move out to the street space. But this thing here, whether you pass or not move to the street, only applies if you're not paying for that membership here. So in this case, I'm totally okay staying here again. Didn't really change the outcome anyway because the monster is here and yes I could consider fighting it or not let's see about that but I think that is quite all right the next thing is also more of a confirmation I did play it correctly this card is really strangely worded but I think I found a threat on the geek of the black goat of the woods expansion where this card is from and it seems I'm playing this correctly this really counts for the next movement phase and then if I decide to use the ability then I can no longer move any further that is so it really helps me a lot moving out of a whatever dangerous situation or whatnot but right now I think that's not really a concern and yeah I think I also messed up a little bit for the starting mythos card which you of course only resolve uh, basically you only resolve the gate and the monster basically everything else is being ignored by that so thanks again for reminding me but I think even with that there was not really a big nothing nothing really that that did impact the gameplay whatsoever we have to move the first player marker to sister mary who is next and i think with that we are moving into the next upkeep phase she definitely wants to move three spaces so we will use her one focus to change this one here slightly and the one piece i kind of forgot was the alchemical process here which allows me to basically yeah cast this spell and then I would gain three dollars for that. And I think that's maybe not because she's not starting with and she's really poor as a mouse, you would say here in Germany at the church mouse. And I think let's do that, right? So it's the first dice roll of the game. Um, it comes with a sanity cost of one, which we are simply paying here. And then we are rolling, yeah, only three dice with her. But unfortunately, she only has one focus. That's really, that's really limiting us in some way. But I will still do it anyway. I mean, the costs are not that high. One, one sanity is okay. And getting three dollars or potentially three dollars for that is okay. And yes, this is good enough. And I may have mentioned it already in my previous playthroughs. These awesome Arkham Horror dice are a very generous gift by... Patrice, really appreciate these, a big deal, highly thematic, really hard to get these days. So yeah, I really do appreciate that. Thanks so much for those. And yeah, that was a success. And of course I forgot she's blessed, though this die would have been okay too. So I don't have the cursed and or the blessed dice, unfortunately. They're really nearly impossible to get. If you know a source where to get those, please let me know. I would totally go for those, but let's Ward Sister Mary with our $3 here. We have to exhaust this, but I think that's not a big deal. We are not going to use it again. And I think this was her upkeep phase. Yeah, let's move over to Michael, who again is in a relatively tough spot. So he can stay here. We I mean, we, we just bought the Silver Twilight Lodge membership card. So staying here might be something worth considering, actually. But moving out here to French Hill to the street space and defeat or try to defeat the Gook here might be also a good thing. And yeah, we need three successes. We are losing two dice. If it hits us and it's overwhelming, we take one hit anyway. And the horror check is a minus one, two, which would basically almost drive us insane unless we are upping our will, which is a three so we're rolling two dice there uh wow okay that's that's a toughie that's a real tough decision now but we have the tommy gun with six dice we have the endurance which gives us plus one uh success basically during a combat so that's seven dice plus the four here eleven dice in total again we need three success now we are losing two so that's nine dice mm, we have a clue which would allow us to reroll one the only thing I'm really worried about is the horror check, actually. 
and we are not really losing a lot of life points because of our strong body here reduces all stamina losses he suffers by one so it would still be three damage actually so that's definitely not nothing hmm. how concerned are we or should we stay one round and then maybe after that one i think let's stick to the plan i'm thinking about not moving anything maybe increasing the will now because let's let's increase the will for this round because i think it's more likely that we are going to use will rather than fight in our encounter so let's leave it at that and here we have bob and i think he simply wants to go to the unvisited isle so he only needs two movement for that lauren luck at two and two i think is okay Fight and will is okay too. The thing is, should I increase? No, I think I would leave it there. So maybe increase our sneak value because again, we only need two movement to get there to pick up a clue. And I think he doesn't have anything for the upkeep phase, I believe. No, we have the handcuffs. That's basically before a combat check. We have the mental fortitude, horror check. The director's diary discard when the tarot level. okay that's okay we can remove it i think that's really a cool thing but i guess that's the end of our upkeep phase and i really need to speed things up i guess i know paul is really doing an amazing job explaining all these things the upkeep phase even telling a story around these things so again highly recommend you to to check out his channel and his arkham horror playthroughs but i think i want to really be a little bit more crisp at least as much as i can <laughs> You know, I'm already talking too much here. So I guess let's end it now here in respect to the upkeep phase. Let's move over to the movement phase. We have increased the movement of Sister Mary here so she can move three spaces. And yes, ideally we want to move one, two, three spaces into the woods. So she's grabbing two more of those, which brings her to three glues. That's not bad at all. And yeah, I think, again, before we are really moving into a gate, we want to make sure we have some clues um, with us because we want to close and seal the gate, ideally. And then, uh, yeah, that's basically her movement. Then we are moving over to Michael. And I guess we have already kind of decided to leave him where he is. That doesn't do anything. There are no lingering effects. In a Touch of Evil, if you stay in a location, you have to roll something. You're rolling an awful lot of dice in Touch of Evil. And I think in a roll of one, you're basically getting attacked by the villain. But let's, that's not happening here, at least as far as I remember. And then last but not least, we are moving over to Bob Jenkins. He will move one, two spaces into the unvisited aisle. We are grabbing this clue, also bringing him to three clues in total. So I think that's not bad. And that's pretty much the end of our movement phase. Let's resolve our encounter for Sister Mary here at the woods. And we are dealing with the Sheldon gang, it seems. The Sheldon gang needs someone to distribute the product from the hidden still. Okay, make a sneak minus one check. That's the one we just decreased down, right? Her sneak is now a two, though she's rolling one die. And that's the one big downside of Arkham Horror 2nd Edition. You can drop to zero or even to a minus um, in this case. And so there might be tests where you automatically fail unless you are willing to spend clues. But that's really the one thing I definitely do enjoy more <laughs> in Eldritch or third edition. But okay. And then, yeah, let's see. Let's roll that die. As usual, I'm not checking out the result, actually. Um, she's still blessed. So there is a 50-50 chance and she has clues. Question is... Do we want to spend clues or not? That's the thing. Okay, let's roll. But let's take a five as it is. Awesome. If you fail, no. If you pass, you get $3 and may search the common item deck for the whiskey card and take it. Nice. $3 and some whiskey, which can help us regain stamina, which or prevent the stamina loss. I think as far as I remember, that's for the other versions of this game. And yeah, awesome. So here are the three dollars and with six dollars in total, she can definitely consider to move, I don't know, to the curiosity shop or to whatever the magic shop, for example, to gain a spell or so. That would be nice. Um, and then we do have the whiskey, any face discount whiskey to reduce any sanity loss. Well, well, that's a sanity loss. Oh, yeah, of course. No. Oh, that's still OK, because again, if you're casting spells, no, that's that's still good enough for her. Cool. I like that. Nice encounter. Not game breaking, but still nice. 
over to Michael at the Silver Twilight Lodge. Because of his membership, we can basically resolve the inner sanctum. And yeah, a glass of orb in this chamber contains a swirling fog. As you handle the sphere, the misty shroud parts to divulge what seems to be the future. Draw the top five cards from the Mythos deck and put them back on top of the deck in any order you desire. Hmm. Yeah, that's not bad, but I think at this phase of the game, also not necessarily, yeah, I don't know, not that important, I guess. Later on, if you really want to make sure certain things are appearing or not appearing, then this is something that you can basically see. But yeah, let's, let's do that. So, one, two, three, four, and last but not least, five. So let's have a quick look at those. Um, is there something which I don't want to be on top of things? I mean, I think the woods I don't want to be on top because right now Sister Mary is there and the monster would be there. And I think if you're automatically sucked into the gate, um, you are... She cannot be... I know she's basically um, delayed, which also I don't really fancy. So I think the woods... It's not going to. Same is true. No, unnameable is okay. Unvisited Isle, definitely also the same thing. Let's put this to the bottom. Let's also do, I don't know, the woods to the bottom. And then let's check where we don't want um, stuff to appear. I mean, the unnameable can be up there. We can look at those. And um, I think I will do these things now off camera, actually, because I also need to check the text here. This is where really you, you are looking into the future. We are really aware of what's happening. So I think I also need to check those out. And then, yeah, you will see those events as they come up anyway. Okay, I have staged the deck accordingly, and I really hope it's basically paying out. I think the events were not terrible. Um, I think I can really live with those. And that was the event or the encounter for Michael. Last but not least, we have Bob Jenkins down here at the Unvisited Isle. So let's see what we get. You come upon a tree that has grown cancer-like around an ancient prayer plaque. Make a fight minus two check. Okay, he's still rolling a die at least. Or exhaust the wither spell, ah, which we don't have. Okay, shriveling spell we don't have. Or an X item. <laughs> We also don't have, an, no, we don't have spells. Okay, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. And then, yeah, if you pass, draw spells equal to your focus. So again, that's really not a big thing. In this case, I really did read along because there is nothing to, 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 to check. So I guess, yeah, let's, let's roll that die. Nothing really to lose there. Maybe I really should continue playing it this way to simply check what's coming. And that's a one, utter fail. But in this case, again, no ill effect. But we didn't get any spells. The spell would have been nice to whatever trade it over to or trade it with Sister Mary, for example, at some point. But yeah, that's not gonna happen. That was the encounter phase. Let's move into the mythos phase. So I really shouldn't be surprised at all. Again, we start here at the unnameable um, with the gate, basically, which is right down here, the city of the great race. We have to also spawn a monster there. So let's see what we get. And that's a Lang Spider. Overwhelming one, we already know. Wow, only these tough guys. And this one also comes with an ambush ability, which only means that you can no longer escape from the fight, I believe. So nothing, no real ill effects per se, but yeah. For here, an overwhelming one, that's a pretty nasty one. Okay, next we are moving our monsters. And so far, all the monsters on the board are actually monsters with a dash, so they are not moving. And we will get a clue at the woods, which means Sister Mary can immediately take it, bringing her up to four. And I almost forgot to place the do marker on Azathoth's card, because for every gate that you are opening, you're also spawning another doom there. So we have 10 more to go before we lose the game. There is no final fight against Azathoth. It's simply he's devouring the world and then it's game over. So this is more of a race, but so far I'm not feeling like we're doing a significant amount of progress actually. But at least we have some clues now amongst us. So we should be able to start sealing some gates, hopefully relatively soon. And then we are dealing with the headline here, Fun Drive for the Arts. And by the way, 
I completely forgot or ignored the um, cap thing from the last Mythos card actually, but ultimately I didn't want to move anyone out there. No one was in danger, I should have mentioned it, but yeah, sorry for that. The performances of the controversial The King in Yellow have increased local enthusiasm for the arts and the historical society is taking advantage of it with a fundraising auction. Nice. Investigators in Arkham may immediately spend up to $1 for every ally left in the ally deck, which should still be 11 actually. I think we haven't lost any, we haven't gained anyone, so I think we should be 11. Um, and for every $2 an investigator spends, he may draw one card from the unique item deck. This, he then takes one card from among those he has drawn and shuffles the rest back into the deck. And now I'm particularly happy that um, basically everyone is kind of well equipped in respect to money awesome stuff so i guess we are starting with sister mary now she's spending i guess four dollars which allows her to draw two unique item cards so let's see what we get it's the king in yellow how thematic is that are you kidding me amazing um and we can't get to keep one of those right we don't have to pay for them anymore yeah no we are shuffling the rest back into the deck so we have a magical weapon the powder of ibn ghazi wow Plus nine to combat checks. But we have to lose one. But that's really okay for her. And the killing is a, is a tome. During the movement, exhaust and spend two movement points to make a lore check. If you pass, gain four glue tokens, lose one sending it. Oh, that's also amazing. Oh, I think she's not our fighter. She wants to hold on to the king in yellow, right? Four glue tokens, that's huge. Yeah, we are sticking with the king in yellow. It's also highly thematic anyway. I really like that. Next we have Michael. I think he's also spending four dollars. I think we want to have at least some choice, right? So let's draw two more cards. Let's see what we get. The Yithian rifle, that might be a good one for him. And the Elt Down Shards, a magical weapon. Exhaust before making it. Oh, that's plus six. Basically the same as the Tommy gun. Yithian rifle only refresh if you are that's basically the same as our entrance. Mmm, that's basically the same thing as the Tommy gun, which we already have. But it's a magical weapon. That may be the main difference. So if someone with physical resistance or so would be definitely. Yeah, let's think about that. In a tome, um, doing movement exhaust and spend two movement points to make a lord. Yeah, that's really not for him. No, we are going with the Yithian rifle. I like that. I really do. And last but not least, we are also spending four dollars. Um, yeah, for Bob Jenkins to all destroy. That's only ah, from the common item deck. Ah, that's that's really a pity. That's really a pity. Elder Sign Pendant. Uh, for a split second, I thought, Elder Sign, what? But no, unfortunately, it's only the Elder Sign Pendant and a Soul Gem. Okay. In the Mythos phase, discard to prevent a monster search. Instead, one monster or two uh, appears. Mm. Mm. Yeah, maybe, but let's see what the soul gem is. Any phase exhaust when you defeat a monster to place it on soul gem instead of claiming as a trophy. Okay, and during upkeep, discard soul gem and all monsters on it to gain X stamina. Mm. Nope, we will go with the Elder Sign Pendant. I like that one better. Cool, I mean, that was really an awesome Mythos card, and I think that's about it. It. Uh, yeah, let's move into the next round. The starting player marker goes to Michael McLean, and I think I'm doing one more round this video. So we have Michael, and I think this round it might be time to get rid of that guck. I think monster control is not unimportant. I also have to um, keep remembering how many monsters are allowed. I think right now there are three, so that's not a big deal. This is also a very, very strange thing, actually. Um, yeah, it's really a very, very strange thing, actually, in respect to the monster limit. It's number of players by three, exactly. So it's seven in our case. No, it's six in our case. We are playing a three-player game. So with a gook, what are we doing? Um, maybe we can now, because we are only moving one. I think we can increase our sneak. Or the uh, will is already basically mixed. Hmm. Uh, let's do the sneak, maybe, or should we simply leave it? I mean, three and three is not bad. Lore and luck doesn't really matter too much either, but I definitely do want to move one out. So maybe we go with more luck. I don't know, because one, a lot of these tests are minus one anyway. So I think, let's leave it. Let's leave it for now. I think that's, yeah, let's, let's not worry about that too much. We are basically moving out and then trying to defeat 
the guck. Up next it's Bob Jenkins and I think we want or we need him to move three spaces this round and I think he doesn't again doesn't have anything in respect to the upkeep. Not only that stuff happens basically well, like the Brazier of Souls here for example it doesn't simply refresh unless I'm spending all of my focus which for him is not a big deal it's only one anyway. So yeah I think that's the upkeep here. Let's refresh that spell. Um, we could use it right now actually. <clears throat> Again do we need more money this round? What do we need to do with her? She's really out of reach on any of those things, right? Hmm. I mean, she has the king in yellow. And this basically is something that we want to prepare for the mythos phase this round. Uh, no, for the movement phase this round. So we need two movement points, which she currently kind of has. And we need another law. So maybe we want to increase, yeah, our law value actually, because we are trying to read the king in yellow. Yeah, I think let's not go for the alchemical process. I mean, yeah, having, I mean, she has the stuff, right? And it's one sanity. Let's do it. No, let's do it. Why not? I mean, she right now is still in a good shape, I guess. So we are spending one more sanity. So she's down to five, which is I still think okay for her. She has upped her lore respectively so we're rolling four dice actually though there is no casting modifier on this one. And yeah there's the blessed four. Oof, that was awfully close which would give us three more dollars actually. Oh that's nice. So she's back at five. Again that's not a bad thing for her at all. Let's exhaust this one and I guess these were all the things for the upkeep phase. Awesome. Let's come to the movement phase. We had a plan. Michael is moving out to French Hill to this movement immediately stops when you're encountering a monster. We can now even try to evade it. We can to fight it. But again, the idea was to fight it here. First thing that always happens is the horror check. Yes, let's do that. So our will is four. That's at least something, but we are losing one. So we are rolling three dice here in total and we need only one success. Typically the difficulty is only a one. And yes, that was the success. Awesome. We are not losing anything from that horror check. That's something. Now we come to the tricky part. First of all, our fight value is a three. Right, then we are losing basically two because that's what the card here says, or rather the token. Then we are using our, because there's no resistance whatsoever, or protection or what it's called. So we are adding in theory six more dice. Um, we only have four left. So we are now at, let me think how to handle this. I think we can basically use this 10 sider here. So we are at seven dice already, right? We already got rid of the one of the two dice from here and we got six. And later on, we can basically also add our entrance here, which gives us one additional success. I take that. Yeah, I think that's pretty okay and nothing else to do. Yes, we could, of course, really go crazy and also throw the dynamite. But no, that's the only thing. We, these are both two-handed weapons, so we cannot use them both. No, I think that's it. It's seven dice, right? Only seven. No, that's it. And wow, we need to come to three successes here. Are you kidding me? Um, we have seven dice. Let's not forget that, right? Okay. And oh, 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 oh. <laughs> are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You are a monster. <laughs> so yeah, amazing. So we have basically taken care of this one. Um, it's overwhelming. So we are still, yeah, we still have to lose one stamina for that. But I... <laughs> I <laughs> would be certain that this was worth it. And yeah, we have basically now a monster with worth our three toughness. So you really get trophies in this game. So fighting monsters and closing gates really gives you some, yeah, something, something more tangible to, to grasp. And all the other games, the monsters are gone and then you are happy. In this case, you really get something out of this, which, yeah, feels nice. Okay, that was pretty brutal. I didn't even use all the remaining dice. I mean, that's amazing. And then it's... Bob, right? And he has three movement. That was the idea. And I know I don't need to go to the Black Cave. I want to go to the graveyard. One, two, 
three spaces over here. We are grabbing the clue, which brings him to four. Nice. And then it's Sister Mary. And yeah, yeah her idea was to read the king in yellow, actually, right? And oh, we can even drink the whiskey to disc reduce any sanity lost by one. I think that's good. Let's do that right away. Um, but we only, I think, yeah, we have to only expect only if we pass, we have to lose a sanity. So it's not really a spell. We are rolling two dice because our lore is four minus two. But the roll by Michael is hard to beat, actually. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's this one success, but only because she's blessed. Amazing. So, yeah, we are losing this, which means we are pretty much discarding the whiskey instead. We are discarding the king in yellow. And this gives us, what was it? Four, right? Wait a second, didn't she have, she had four. She had four clues. Where we, ah, it's down here, sorry for that. Um, and then, yeah, what, we are adding four more, right? Yeah, okay, so that's great. Four, sorry for that, for my confusion. So we are adding one here. So now she is basically fully equipped to close and seal a gate, which is really amazing, actually. And I should not forget the extra will and luck she has. But I think so far, that was not a thing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So far, a very cool round, actually. Ah, crap. And I just noticed something for the blessing. Yes, of course. Um, that's something in, again, the other versions of Arkham Horror, you're typically losing a blessing when you are failing a roll. It's, it's much easier to gain, uh, lose a curse, but also lose a blessing. So it, even things out here, you have to roll that during the upkeep. And I think I have at least forgotten that once, or I think maybe even twice. Um, because you don't roll it in the in the round where you get it or in the round after in the first round after you get it I believe right so you have it at least once let me check that that's a bit unclear it, it the, the Dunwich horror rules basically explain these things um, is that you don't roll for it the round after or in the round you got it right what do they say do not require an upkeep roll during the first upkeep phase after an investigator acquires them. As I started the game with it, I think I should have rolled twice, actually. Hmm, yeah, that's bad. I will roll it twice. Okay, that's a six. Okay, and that's a three. Okay, we are good. Um, but I really have to remember, maybe I will place a die here. Maybe let's go for maybe one of our J-play dice instead. So this is a one. As you know, so I hopefully don't forget that in the rounds to come. Sorry for that. Okay, then let's move into the encounter phase. Michael doesn't have an encounter here at the French Hill at the street space, but we do have one for Bob Jenkins at the graveyard. You find the half buried corpse of a strange being. Draw a monster from the cup and take it as a monster trophy, even if it has the endless ability. Yeah, now I'm drawing a cultist or so but <laughs> wow i still take it i mean it's a trophy and we find a chthonian with a toughness of three awesome 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 yeah i totally take that as a trophy nice encounter here and then we have our second encounter in the woods here with sister mary you see a woman pouring blood on a field of flowers when you move closer she's gone make a luck plus one check Okay, her luck is actually three, not bad. And no, she has the skill. So that's plus one luck, plus one. So wow, she's rolling five dice for that luck check. That's pretty amazing. And she's still plus, and yeah, wow, still just good enough. If you pass, she left her jewelry among the blood and you gain three dollars again. Wow, she's swimming in money. I mean, yeah, we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, those locations tell you what to expect. Maybe a common item would have been nice for her too, but yeah, I take it. Which means she's now basically at eight dollars, so I'm considering not to use the alchemical process anytime soon again, right? Yeah, we really need to get her to a gate, actually. That's the plan. Or maybe we meet somewhere and have someone else go to the to a gate, for example. Also something to consider. Okay, let's move into the next mythos phase. Gangs clean up 
East Town. So we have a gate opening up at the Witch House. Oh, there is already a gate. Which means we are dealing with a monster search. Good thing is we are not adding one of those dreadful counters, but this really significantly increases the amount of monsters in Arkham. And here I'm not really sure how um, we are distributing those randomly. So every gate gets basically one monster. And the rules are now, do I draw one? Or do I draw and then choose the gate? I, I really don't know. So that's just why I played a little bit as, as punishing as possible. So I will simply start here at the independent square. So I take it randomly. If I do that incorrectly, please let me know. And that's a warlock. I think yellow are stationary monsters. They are here and they have a magical immunity, which means I cannot defeat them with a magical weapon. And if you pass a combat check against the warlock, return it to the box and gain two clue tokens. Okay, okay, why not? Next we're doing the one for the witch house, right? The one that caused all of this and that's a night gaunt. And the night gaunt, I think that's a flying monster. No, the <laughs> one with the dashed one. And okay, yeah, we have to deal with that in a second. It will, oh, 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 it might actually move towards us, but no, they're not, no, they're not activating. That's at least something. And last but not least, we have the city of the great race. And again, I'm not sure if I should have drawn three and then decided the gates or if I decide the gate and then choose the rules seem a bit ambiguous about this. And that's Amigo. Um, which is also flying monster. This one is activating actually, but I think there is nothing because they only go here and if they are not, then they are basically moving back to the sky. But for now, let's place those suckers here, right? Yeah, those were all the monsters. Right now we had one, two, three, four, five monsters on the board. Six is our monster limit in Arkham and then they're moving into the outskirts and then yeah, nasty stuff will happen. Then we are spawning a clue at the Black Cave, which was something I definitely planned so that Bob can move in here for the next turn and gain two clue token at once, also bringing him to six, which is definitely a very solid number. And last but not least, we have the movement. And right now I think we only have one circular monster on the board. So we have no diamond, we have no rectangular one basically. And again, the rules in the core rule book are a bit ambiguous about those flying guys, um, which means we are only activating really the flying monsters that are being activated. And again, there is no case where when a monster is in a location um, with a connected street space and there are no investigators, then it doesn't do anything. I mean, I'm a programmer at heart, so in theory, this would be a failed function <laughs> because I think doesn't know what to do in this case, but the FAQ are a little bit more clear. I think the FAQ, at least in the Dunwich Horror, uh, basically, I think also mean if there is nothing, they still move to the sky, but they still count as being in Arkham. So it's part of the monster limit per se, our six in this case. And again, we were at five, if I recall that correctly. Yes. Uh, it was not the last thing to resolve on that card because we still have to resolve that one here. All monsters in the East Town streets, all locations are returned to the cup. And wow, indeed, there is one. The Moon Beast is here. Uh, everything, all the locations here would also be removed. But yeah, getting rid of a monster. Wow, for a Mythos card. Wow, that is truly amazing. Cool stuff. But yeah. I basically knew what was coming actually. And then that's basically the end of the mythos phase. Was not a bad turn actually. Sorry for all the goofs and stuff or things that I have missed, but I really hope I will catch these things. And again, let me know if I kind of interpret some of the rules a little bit incorrectly, especially in respect to these monster searches. I'm not 100% sure about this. But okay, that's basically my playthrough for today. A huge shout out to all my patrons and channel members. You guys are amazing. If you want to help the channel, you can find me on Patreon. You can join me here directly on YouTube. Like and subscribe. This always helps tremendously, actually. And yeah, um, keep in mind, there is still a giveaway active for at least eight or nine more days now. So check out some of my older videos in respect to Dungeons, Dice and Danger if you want the chance to win a copy of that game. And yeah, I think with that being said, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye bye.